Ladies and gentlemen, this is our weekly program Diplomacy. I'm going to go on the move by heading the program for you. Have a beautiful stay with us. My guest today is Ambassador Mulu Salamon, Ethiopia's ambassador to Germany. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining me and welcome. First of all, I want you to share us a little about the historical relationship of both German and Ethiopia. Actually, German is always a good ally of Ethiopia, have long-standing history. All countries have good relationship with Ethiopia. One of the supporters of Ethiopia, of course. What well, the current diplomatic relationship start of the both countries at this moment? Germany is one of the best allies of Ethiopia. Our economic relationship is also, political relationship is also very good. Um, we, we, we know Germany is one of the biggest importer of Ethiopian coffee. That's one of the issues and still we, they are one of the big supporters, especially the economic cooperation. They are supporting us in so many issues like in the COVID. They have supported us and also they have a big plan now to support Ethiopia through compact with Africa, which they want to develop a great job so that Africa and Ethiopia can create job at home. Uh, instead of having more immigrants and they want to support the agricultural sector and also women they want to support in uh, energy development it could be energy from uh, solar or uh, hydro or wind whichever energy they want to develop in that also they want also to help us in health sectors how is the relationship between Ethiopians living there in Germany and Ethiopian embassy in Germany? How is the relationship? How, how can you express it for us? The Ethiopian embassy in Germany is trying to work well with the diaspora of Ethiopia. Uh, we have been trying to map out where the Ethiopians uh, stay there. We, have not, we do not have a large number of uh, diaspora in Germany. It's about 17,000 totally in all five countries like uh, in Germany, in uh, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovak Republic and Ukraine, totally it's about 17,500. And uh, most of them are in, in the region of uh, like uh, around Frankfurt and others. And we are, we are uh, trying to co-op up, trying to find our people so that they know uh, the new policy for the diaspora, where the government is trying to help the diaspora. And our uh, policy, the current policy since the reform, is also giving big rights for the Ethiopian citizens so that the, the government would like to help them to exercise their right. Uh, the focus is to help the diaspora, to use their knowledge, to help their country and also to benefit for themselves with all these offers of they can have house, they can own a property, they can open bank like uh, previously before the reform, the diaspora were not allowed to, ha to buy any share from the local bank. But now they can buy local share from the local bank. They can also uh, have a foreign account. They can use their money to develop their own property at home. And they can share their knowledge. They can come and invest. They can also share their experience of knowledge, whether it's in engineering or health sector or what have you. That is uh, one of the issues so that we are trying to engage and try to show them uh, this time why we try to connect to the diaspora is not only to ask any money or support or donation or contribution, but also to help them uh, understand who they are and also why they are staying outside or why they want to come back, or, but to make use of themselves, to recognize themselves so that they use their potential, whether they are in Germany or whether they are in Ethiopia, but to be a very uh, sensible person so that they will be happy about themselves instead of simply counting the years staying outside. And we have started uh, to create a diaspora um, uh, council, which is advisory council, which will help the diaspora to, in, to help them involve in different sectors, about eight sectors. It could be in investment, it could be in education, it could be in NGO, it could be in uh, health center and environment, different sectors, so that they can contribute in any field they like to come in whether they are in Ethiopia or in Germany. Like they can establish anything in Germany and can connect to Ethiopia. They can have a chapter in, in our country so that they can benefit. They can also give benefit to the country. They can use their knowledge to help the, the world and the, our country also. In what way is the Ethiopian diaspora living in Germany are participating for the development of their country? The traditional way is that everybody tries to send some remittance to their families, relatives, so on and so forth. 
uh, we have started this process of uh, supporting the country, which uh, requests one one dollar per day. Uh, they have some technical problems uh, with because of the bank system. We are working with the bank to sort out this issue. The bank uh, is not allowing to to open a third party, and uh, sending to Addis Ababa directly have a big cost. We are trying to create a new uh, intermediary issue to solve this problem, but they are very willing to support their country. And they are very willing also, some of them, to come in a group as investor, with foreign investors also, and some are very willing to support the reform, because they know this reform is really great for our country. And they know this reform will uh, take the country to the higher level. They know this reform uh, will elevate the country's image. Uh, since this reform, they know everybody is impressed what happened in the, in the 100 days. Uh, the peace issue with Eritrea and the neighboring countries, how to, uh, what our, uh, His Excellency Dr. Abiy Ahmed took about Sudan, South Sudan, uh, Somalia, Eritrea, Djibouti, what have you, all these neighboring countries. The effort exerted was very great, that it gave great impression for, to the world. And the Green Legacy what uh, Dr. Abi is doing for the environment and try to show Addis Ababa project, the palace project, I mean the <laughs> Maddemar project and also the Toto project. All these new projects are amazing. Uh, not only that, his peace award, the Nobel award is really what elevated Ethiopia and Africa in general, uh, and black people in general, to be really uh, respected in the world. And this uh, performance has given us also an energy to talk to people with pride. Uh, and not only that, the uh, reform taken regarding the giving uh, higher level position, especially the ministerial position for women also, the 50%, and giving re uh, reform for the legal system, uh, human rights issues, and also inviting the opposition parties to come and uh, compete freely and to release all the political prisoners, all these issues have really impressed the world. And uh, like those people on the Facebook who mentioned, try to spoil the name, that we explain to the world the truth on the ground and what's on the Facebook is completely different. That's why we speak in front of the people uh, about our country with pride and we are rushing to go out of this poverty with coming in a great synergy and trying to compile what we have as a human being, what we have uh, as a natural resource, as a human resource and as a knowledge, all combined together and try to help our people and bring the society and the country forward. And that's what impresses uh, the world, especially German officials, the president, the chancellor are always telling me that they really appreciate and support this reform. They always say they are behind us to support the reform, especially they appreciate the idea of uh, Dr. Abi Maddamer, and uh, meaning the synergy, bringing together all the best from everybody and from every part, even taking problems as an opportunity and to move forward. That's what takes the country forward. And this uh, approach, this type of concept uh, is great not only for Ethiopia, it's also great for Africa and the world also, because it takes as a center human element. It's not very mechanical. It takes human element into it. That's why everybody is forced to appreciate this concept. And we are happy to talk to everybody like this. And we are happy to talk about the current situation of the country and also the situation of uh, GERD, so that they understand what's going on. How the Ethiopian embassy in Germany are working, promoting the interests of Ethiopia? When we see from how the Egyptians try to explain to the world in, very, in a very bold and aggressive way, we, while we are having the truth, we started explaining that even some people were misunderstanding that uh, Nile River was the source of Nile River or Egypt. But we, we try to explain the fact that the Nile source is Ethiopia and 80, 86, around 86% of the water is from Ethiopia. And also uh, we explain that we have no intention to harm the downstream like Egypt or Sudan. And we explain how the, the stand of Ethiopian government and the stand of Ethiopian people. We always tell them in our country as a culture, you know it, when you drink from the same water, if you harvest from the same water, you are considered as a person who is taking from one breast from one mother. We consider Egyptians as if we are brothers and sisters from one mother. That's the attitude of Ethiopia. But sometimes wrong uh, impression, wrong thoughts are communicated to the world. 
and this water is our natural uh, water where everybody should use in an in um, equitable way and we always ask equitable and our right as a country and we want to keep our sovereign right and we don't have any intention but we are explaining that we are very much in need of basic uh, necessity we want to take our majority of the people out of poverty our people about uh, 68 to 70 percent have no electricity but egypt have 98 percent and you know in our society are using uh, biomass and uh, animal waste for cooking and they suffer from respiratory organ problem and also from eye problem so that this is affecting the society's health not only that while they cut the trees for for firewood the environment is affected and we see this dam help to protect the environment to help the help of the people and also when we are working on this industrial park we need power to generate or to produce anything so that when the foreign direct investors come, even Ethiopian investors like to have power generation to produce any product, either for export or local consumption. When the industries work, we get employment for our people. When the investors come, they employ 1,000, 3,000 or 1 million employees. That means the, those people who go out of, for economic reasons and uh, give problem to other countries will remain at home instead of going out for economic reasons. And this will have great impact also on reducing immigration. And uh, it can also create great uh, uh, regional, sub-regional and regional integration also, because this can generate more power in the future. And it helps Egypt and uh, Sudan also to regulate the, the water flow, to help them not to suffer from silt. And it has a big benefit for them and they know it. This water is, this dam is more beneficial to them also. But as they, we try to explain why these people complain is having different reason, not a rare reason. And um, people are understanding. Initially, people are misunderstanding the issue. Some people might think that Ethiopia is going to lock the, the water. No, it's impossible. Ethiopians are very sensible and we know it's our right to use it together amicably and with friendly uh, approach. We know Egyptians are our brothers and sisters. Our intention is to use this water and develop the area together, even to support the world with using the Nile water, river loan to our people. And both people, this water is enough for all of us, even for more people. It's only, it requires only to have a sense and try to work together and have a good intention, positive intentions towards each other. And that's what Ethiopian people and Ethiopian government would like to tell the world, and we have been telling the world the truth about this. From day one, we are explaining to Egypt about the Nile Dam. We are telling them how this dam is going to be operated from the inception. But when they build the Aswan Dam, they didn't communicate, they didn't tell us at all. When they even take the, this uh, Aswan Dam out of its natural course and send it to the desert, to Tushkan Canal, they didn't tell us. They throw it away and they are using the water in very, in a very extravagant way. Um, that all were not communicated to us, but Ethiopia is trying to be fair, to show the world, to show our neighbors that we are not harming anybody, but we want to use this water because it's also our right. We are contributing 86% and using 0% is unfair, so that we can use this water together without harming each other, without significant harm. That's why I try to explain, and most people understand, they know it. For me, I always say they know it, but it might be a different reason. And uh, later or sooner, what I'm happy about is the diplomatic decision that Ethiopia went through, the government's uh, effort, especially to make this happen in uh, two years and a half or two years. You know, the dam had a problem earlier, wrong problems, uh, technical because of some uh, uh, building problems and they destroy, they dismantle that and build it again. What was built in two years was what was spoiled five years, six years ago. And after managing this to make sure and make it possible to feel the first feeling was a great achievement. It's, it really requires commitment of the government, real dedication and the capacity of leadership. No one can manage this with this old crisis, with this old uh, uh, daily fire. 
is uh, coming to the government's uh, attention. All these internal and external challenges created by externals and internals, but with all this, managing this and make it happen is something to be incredible. Sometimes when you see it, it seems very easy, but when you see what was done, you cannot imagine to make this happen with this short time and with all this uh, pressure. Uh, because this has a great pressure of financing in foreign exchange, uh, supplying the materials needed, managing the contractors to daily to perform each and every approach so that if one day is late, it's a serious issue because one operation will affect the other operation. All this follow up and making all these workers, engineers and others to be happy and be dedicated and trying to motivate these people to feel the belongingness and ownership and uh, make it happen, it required great leadership and really thank our government to have such a serious decision and commitment. And that was what happened and I also would like to thank our engineers who really, workers, all of them, who have been working on the dam, uh, that can be even contractors who took the commitment, we really would like to thank them. What kind of activities are done in order to protect the right of Ethiopians living there? The Ethiopian citizens living in German, whenever they have a problem, not only in German, those who are in the areas we cover all in the all countries, whenever they have a problem, we try to communicate with them and help whatever the problem they might face. Uh, actually, the human rights is uh, protected there, they are not affected, but uh, because, as, uh, because there are, some of them are considered as illegal, illegal immigrants, and they want, to, they want to send them back. We also negotiate with the government so that they can take them according, they can handle them according to the international law where their human rights are not affected. Some of them have suffered to be there due to different reasons, earlier political reasons or other reasons. And those who can manage to stay are staying, who may not manage to stay might be treated according to the law where the international law is forcing the immigrants according to the jointly signed international law. But if they are treated differently, we all try to communicate to the government so that things should go accordingly. Uh, that's how we do. And those who have any other problem also who came to the embassy or communicate to us where, when they have a problem when they travel or they have a health problem or any other problem or when the people die or need support, we are always there with them. And uh, we also communicate with the diaspora to help the, the, the country for uh, building the dam and also support the COVID. Though at this uh, COVID time, most of them are not, uh, I can say, some are getting uh, one third of their salary, half of their salary because, uh, because of the lockdown. But still, the, you see the passion of most of them to come and help. The, you see the passion, especially because they support this, uh, this um, the silent majority, support the, the reform. They, even at the time of COVID, when we are in lockdown, we are not working at all from the office. We are working at home, but they call us, they want, they want to come and buy a uh, bond for the guard, give donation for the guard, for the dam. And also sometimes they come to give money for the COVID and also for the dam. Those even who cannot use the bank account, they are coming directly and they want to, to help the country. And that you see a big passion, a big belongingness and a big support. I don't mean there are no people who are opposing this nice uh, performance. There are no people sometimes, they might ask a lot of things, but things cannot be answered overnight. There are a lot of issues which, which require change, uh, which require um, to be answered through the process of uh, uh, legal condition or constitutional issues and other issues. But the intention of the government, the intention of uh, uh, this condition of Maddamar is not uh, ignoring the problems of uh, people. It is not ignoring the nations and the nationalities. It's not ignoring the issue of individuals. It's not ignoring the issue of religion or ethnicity or uh, nations and nationalities. It will consider all and also it should be answered all. It should be answered. But the, some people try, those who do not like the change are using, they want the government to, to answer everything overnight, two years. You cannot answer everything in two years, which was a problem for 30, 40 years or 100 years. Everything needs time. Even these two years were continuously, you see, was in turmoil. 
they were come, they were creating a lot of problems so that the government cannot even have time to sit and think about things and try to handle but you see with this old term oil this great job is done regarding the handling of uh, the financial crisis the handling of the GERD, the handling of uh, unemployment incredible amount of uh, more than one million were employed within short time a lot of issues were managed including the peace of the region including the the economic conditions including critical which which shock the world covid you, you can see how ethiopia really take precautionary measures initially if they haven't started early that everybody was in quarantine when they come imagine we have 110 million people what would happen and we don't have that uh, we don't have that structure of uh, uh, health well structured well health system like other countries like europeans or americans you know how america is tested <laughs> we cannot manage but the good thing is that the government in spite of having all this turmoil in the country they managed the, the covid very smartly and try to protect people though you see now it's increasing uh, slightly if it was not protected early this could have been hundred thousand or something like that but we are lucky that it was done the precautionary measure or mitigation was done earlier that you have to appreciate and that's what uh, even the world most of the people in our uh, in germany also appreciate the ethiopian government for not only taking the precautionary measures but also for thinking for africa not only for ethiopia because dr abir initiated that the the, the debt the financial debts of the country should be cancelled or postponed and also he tried to do this uh, campaign with uh, our chancellor angela merkel in germany and also try to communicate to the world that africa cannot afford to pay debt now today at this critical time where the factories are closed for lo for um, covid lockdown this uh, thinking of uh, for africa great region shows that ethiopia is getting a great leadership not only for its own country for africa also and also for the world they appreciate this and we appreciate that also.